All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming by. Uh, my name is Craig Barr. I'm with the Enterprise team with Epic Games on the Unreal Engine side of things. I'm going to take a brief overview here in the next 20 minutes of Twin Motion. Um, we're going to take a look at some beautiful visualizations with Twin Motion. We'll do an overview of how Twin Motion works, and we'll talk about a little bit about what's to come with Twin Motion as well. So before we do that, let's take a little bit of a, a look at what we do at Epic Games and how this works on the Unreal Engine side with our enterprise side, which focuses on this non-game area, all these different industries that we work within. So what does Epic Games do? Everyone out there has typically heard of Epic Games either from the beautiful photoreal imagery that we do through Unreal Engine, or they may have heard of this little video game that's come out recently over the last couple of years, Fortnite. So I'm sure quite a few of you have probably heard of Fortnite. That comes on our publishing side, we work in a unique way that as we build our engine, we're tethered to a game development studio that is actually building games, publishing games. And in doing so, that helps further our engine. So what we have there is kind of the proof in the pudding uh, with our uh, engine as it's being developed, and we're actually developing games on that side, on our publishing side. And then over on the other side, what we have is our software development side. And this is where we get into, of course, the development of things like Unreal Engine. And we'll be uh, developing further Twin Motion here, which we'll take a look at how that will be in a moment. But on that side, on the software development side, we kind of divide into two spaces. The game side, of course, so we cater to other game studios where they use Unreal Engine to create uh, most of the top AAA game titles that you're probably familiar with. And on the other side, we have what we call our enterprise side. And that's where we work in the non-games industry. So four areas of focus that we work within there. The AEC, or the Architectural Engineering and Construction. Uh, we work in manufacturing and design, product design, automotive design, film and television. A lot of amazing, exciting stuff happening in film and television these days. And of course, training and simulation as the fourth area in that enterprise space as well. Um, and we have many different customers out there from all ranges of industries using Unreal Engine in really cool and compelling ways these days. So the enterprise team uh, is built to service or cater to these industry needs here. So we have a dedicated team that's uh, a global, worldwide team, uh, dedicated and focused on all of these non-game or other industry uses. Um, and a lot of these developers have come from all different industries or have even come from the Unreal Engine development side that have been there for years developing the amazing uh, product that is Unreal Engine. So Unreal Engine, really quickly here, it's very artist friendly. Whether you're a uh, really in-depth programmer, you can certainly jump into Unreal Engine and do very complex thing on a programming side or you can be completely uh, devoid of the programming side of things. And what we have is a very artist-friendly workflow where you can do very powerful things still with code in the sense without actually having to program or write scripts, where you can use our visual scripting, uh, which we call Blueprint, which allows you to connect a bunch of nodes and have access to functions and variables that you would, have a, you would be using typically in a code-based or programming sense Blueprint enables artists to quickly do the exact same functionality by connecting a series of nodes to be able to do really unlimited amounts of things or whatever it is they may want to do. So of course, the, one of the coolest things with Unreal Engine is production proven by all those triple game, game titles that you've seen over the years. Unreal Engine is certainly nothing new. You know, we're coming up to, it's, this is decades in, in the development of this engine now. Um, so what we strive for and what we uh, celebrate with our engine there is our capabilities within the photorealistic ability to build amazing visuals or standalone applications or immersive reality experiences. Very high performance in, uh, engine. Uh, one of the cooler things that we've added uh, over the last few releases is built-in collaboration. So you can actually be working in Unreal Engine and have somebody on the other side of the planet inside your viewport working with that data or that design in there as well. So some pretty amazing stuff. Uh, the, public, the source code is made public. It's available for Unreal Engine, so you can customize Unreal Engine to what you want it to be. And probably the biggest uh, point on here is that it's all free. You can download Unreal Engine and use this right now to create any one of these type of experiences, whether it's imagery or animation or VR, whatever it may be. You can grab Unreal Engine right now and do that. So this idea of Unreal Engine with this one asset and many uses. So we saw some of those uses before, but the cool thing, the way Unreal Engine works, is very easy to grab some data, wherever that data may come from. It may be a complex architectural model or an automotive model. It's very easy to go in and create something simple like really high-res photoreal imagery, 
or video output of right out of Unreal Engine, but at the same time, be able to just, all of a sudden the client says inevitably, we want this to be an immersive experience or a standalone interactive application, or we need this to be an immersive virtual reality or augmented reality experience. Simple to do with the data that comes into Unreal Engine. It's very quick and easy to do that as, as a development platform. So that was Unreal Engine on the side of things here. So what's Twin Motion? Well, Twin Motion really simply is this idea of click and go. Twinmotion is Unreal Engine underneath the hood of things. We have a very simple UI over top of it, and it, of course, keeps it very simple in the, in the way that you can work with this. We're going to look at some examples, and I'll, I'll jump into uh, Twinmotion here in a moment as well. But the idea behind Twinmotion is that we have people out there that might work with complex CAD data, maybe the, on the architectural side, for, as an example here, that don't have the knowledge or the experience or even the want or desire to know what goes on deep inside Unreal Engine. They want to bring their data in quickly, be able to create beautiful visuals very quickly and output that very quickly. And that's exactly what Twin Motion is about. So we get these things like nice asset libraries, the ability to, to, to create one-click animation. We'll take a look at a couple examples here in a moment. So the, the fine folks over at Happy Mushroom were uh, uh, happy enough to let me use this within this presentation. I thought this is an excellent demonstration of how Twin Motion works. It's this drag and drop functionality, bring in that building data set and actually create an environment in the background around it, start to add in props or different urban structures to be able to start populating the scene with something to make it come to life. Um, and all of these are just using the Twin Motion asset library there. Of course, characters or things like uh, props, like park benches, the different materials, um, foliage, trees, all sorts of different things that you could apply in a landscape. And there's the ability to add in people really quickly into that as well. And they take this actually to a really cool level where they start to add in water, they deal with the, uh, the vegetation in here, and they actually start to add in some, some birds, and they even throw a plane into the entire scene. Uh, you can see them dialing in the daytime as well. You can simply dial in the time of day or the seasons or maybe the weather. You know, here they throw in an airplane and fire that up in the sky and put a quick animation on that to have that flying over, throw some fish in there. Really quick and easy to work with and output something really cool and compelling very quickly as well. So Twin Motion, again, that same idea with Unreal Engine, one asset, many uses. We want you to be able to get your data in there very quickly and create beautiful high-res still imagery. Uh, interactive experiences, video output, whatever it may be. We have a lot of people that jump in with their data and uh, very quickly they're outputting 4K visualizations of architectural data as well. So some samples here, uh, some Twin Motion customer, customer samples that uh, uh, I have here just as a brief sample. Um, some different architectural design, people doing large scale urban projects, or maybe they want to do interiors and work with small scale, maybe a housing project or something. And this idea of grabbing data, bringing it in quickly, configuring things, uh, dragging and dropping things in there, putting in things to kind of bring it to life, doing time lapse like this with time of day or whatever it may be, working with different camera effects, you know, depth of field or different things like that. Um, still imagery here, uh, creating beautiful high-res still imagery very quickly at a twin motion. Um, and also non uh, you know, NPR, non-photorealistic rendering, so stylized rendering, maybe something like a blueprint or a sketch approach. All of this comes with Twin Motion. I think I also mentioned, just like Unreal Engine, this is free. We acquired Twin Motion and we took the product and we've made it free. You can grab this right now. Um, it's important to note on that, that license that you grab is the full version of Twin Motion, and that license you have will be free forever, but we're only going to offer that free download until the fall. So. In November, we will cease that free download, so grab it now and start using it. And the reason why we're going to cease this is we're going to, we have plans for this. We're going to update the uh, version of Unreal Engine. We'll bring in some performance enhancements. Uh, we want to bring real-time ray tracing into Twin Motion. And one of the coolest features is we want you to be able to bring your data in really quickly, win a job with it, convince the client of what the job's going to be, and then continue developing that by sending that to Unreal Engine. So you'll be able to do that with the the later version of Twin Motion once we get into development of that as well. So here's some examples here of some kind of uh, you know, more entertainment ideas of, of, of developing or, or taking a look at environments perhaps for a, uh, a non-architectural um, uh, standpoint. So it might be building a set or something that has to put together a, a very quick proof of uh, concept. And Twin Motion, of course, of course, is very capable of doing that as well. 
So we'll jump forward here to the functionality of Twin Motion, some of what you get out of the box with Twin Motion. Of course, things like reflectivity or accurate reflections, soft area, area shadowing, translucency with water and glass, um, different uh, effects like ambient occlusion, working with things like skylights or image-based lighting to help it illuminate the scene. Uh, global illumination overall within Twin Motion so that you have accurate lighting based on sunlight or even moonlight. Um, and let's move forward here. I thought this was a, a really good comparison to put up here. So a software that will remain unnamed on the other side here using uh, ray tracing. So that same geometry there, an hour and 29 minutes, 2K resolution with Twin Motion, same data brought in um, 0.2 seconds to build a 4K uh, resolution image of that. So at the end of the day, you know, like I said before, faster equals cheaper. You know, the, abil the ability to bring in your data and create something real time like this versus waiting for something to maybe correct it or change it. This could be the difference between winning or losing a job or convincing a stakeholder or a client, right? So with Twin Motion, you get all of this right out of the box. And of course, just as simply, this could be a real time video uh, of the scene. This is a really nice, simple display of this idea of how uh, Twin Motion works. So in this two-click workflow, but really before we get into the VR side, you know we have these one-click workflows from thing products right now like Revit and uh, Graphisoft Archicad. With one click, you can go live from those pr those packages right into Twin Motion. And if you take it a little bit further and you exhaust yourself with a second click, you can get you can bring that data right from Revit, for example, and bring it right into virtual reality and Twin Motion and quickly populate it with all these different things that we've been looking at here as well. So multiple ways to learn Twin Motion really quickly. We have a really robust, amazing online learning library available that allow you to learn in depth things like Unreal Engine. We're adding more there related to Twin Motion. We also offer classes at events. We have academies and classes around. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly flip right over here to my uh, little scene of Twin Motion. One of the scenes that we saw here in some of my slides and some of the video, um, this is one of our sample scenes. We call this Norway House. Just like in Unreal Engine, I have components here that represent that there are some sound effects placed within the scene and some different wind effects and different things happening there. I'm just going to hit my G key to turn that off, so maybe I don't want to see that. Um, and I can quickly just tumble around in here. So let's do something kind of cool really quickly. We saw the ability to work with um, you know, how the drag and drop functionality is with Twin Motion. Let's take a look at how that is. You can see, first of all, how simple the UI is, right? So we have this scene, and there's not a lot of UI, UI going on. It's kept very simple, very light, very quick and easy to use. So I want to add something to this scene. I mean, there's a little arrow right here. I'm just going to grab that arrow. And here's the library of things. So you can see that we have up on the side all of these different libraries of materials and assets and vegetation and landscape tools, different lighting, even human characters, vehicles. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that come with Twin Motion right now. Um, I, I believe it's upwards of 3,000 assets that you get out of the box with Twin Motion uh, in all these different areas. So if we jump into the materials as a quick example, you can see that we have things like glass, uh, different metal, you know, if we jump into the wood, for example, and they give you samples as to what that might look like. All of this is scalable. So, for example, those planks, we can go in and define the size of them uh, given the space that they're going in. Um, all of these materials come uh, out of the box here with uh, Twin Motion, um, as well as things like vegetation and landscape. So if I wanted to add uh, quickly maybe some trees to this, uh, let's go through and look at maybe we can add one of these guys. I can just quickly start to drag and drop those um, into my scene there and just position it uh, maybe wherever I want it. Maybe we'll pull it along these rocks over in here. That looks good. And I could add in maybe some different ones. Here we'll put in um, a bit of a bigger tree. Let's put this guy in here. So if I just drag that right into the background, I can place that, and at any time, of course, I can come back and grab any one of these assets if I want to change them, remove them, or move them somewhere else in the scene. Maybe I need a different scale or proportion of them. Very easy to do. Um, something else that we saw in the video that's very cool and quick and easy to do. Let's get out of the. Um, let's actually get right out of the the uh, library here. Actually, we'll take a look at the characters in here. So we have different kinds of humans, you know, male and female. 
all different cultures, different uh, a, a whole library of different things in there. You can even add in a dog. You know, maybe we have um, a cow sitting over here on the grass. So we'll have a cow just sitting in there. Um, things like birds are very easy to quickly add in here. I'm going to get out of the library and I'm going to add in some characters in here. So I'm going to go down below on this UI, this little urban icon. It looks like a city. And we have these things along the bottom. You can see, again, the UI is very simple. We have these things, context, paths, camera, line, measure. We can take a look at those another time. But right now, I'm going to jump into the paths. And what I want to do is just quickly create uh, uh, some animation here with a character. So I'm going to go to character path. You can see that we have these big icons. And I just simply click on them. And then I, I go and I create. I drag and drop and create. So this is really cool. This is such a simple way to create something with people, humans interacting with the uh, landscape. So I'm just going to hit my little pen nib here. And now I've activated that. I've turned it on. I want to hit G, though. Just like in Unreal Engine, hitting G is like going out of game mode here. I can get all my different assets of, you know, as I mentioned, there's some lights happening there. There's some sound effects. And now I've got my little ball. And this is my, my path drawing ball. So I might want to start here, click here, and have a character move around in this scene simply maybe walks this guy walks down and crosses our little bridge here i don't know where he goes let's just have him uh, go through the trees here and disappear into the woods uh, i'll hit escape to get out of that and then when i'm going and now you can see uh, right away i have people walking around on that scene well this looks kind of creepy it looks like something out of a cult film right i don't know where they're going or what's happened in that room but they're on their way over the bridge near the forest. It's a little creepy. So let's get rid of that and just get it down to one guy. What I want to do is adjust the density. If I crank this little bar up here, you can see that we actually get an, an enormous amount of people coming out of that, that, uh, that house as to whatever was happening in there. So again, too many people for my liking here. Let's bring that down to a smaller level here, the density here. Maybe I want it down to something like uh, 1%. And there is a guy in there. Where'd he go, though? Oh, there they are. There's a guy right here underneath the tree. Um, we can zoom in and, and down on, onto that person there. Um, we could change what that person's doing. They're carrying a shopping bag. Maybe that's not the right context in there. So we could change the street clothing here. You know, maybe we want them to be uh, in a travel mode. Yeah, this guy's got some luggage. That's not going to work. So maybe they're at the beach. This guy's on his cell phone walking around. He's probably going to miss the bridge and fall in the river. But uh, he won't, though, actually, because he's going to follow that path all the way along. But you can see how quick and easy that is. Just a couple of clicks, and I've already got someone walking around. Maybe I want to increase the density of that or actual the width of the path as well. So it gives a little bit of play as to how, how far they're walking or able to walk. Um, the cool thing about this is that I could do this with a couple of different things as well. I can make a, a vehicle path, so I could add cars. Uh, I could add a bicycle riding through there. Any number of a bunch of different things on there. So. Let's jump out of this right now because I think I'm running low on time. I'm just going to switch back to where we were. Uh, so again, if you want to find ways to learn about Unreal Engine, plenty of ways online. We have an amazing, robust online learning library. Um, and I just wanted to last put this up here. Remember, this is free until November. Grab this version now. We're going to be doing substantial updates to this. Feature in, uh, enhancements, performance enhancements, quality enhancements. I mentioned we want to add real-time ray tracing to this. Uh, we want to be able to do the functionality to take what you create in here and send it over to Unreal Engine and further develop it to have all the control that Unreal Engine brings with it. Uh, so definitely check it out online and be able to grab and work with your data really quickly in Twinmotion. We see people creating amazing things in the architectural space, but we also see people creating stuff even in the entertainment space where they're creating set extensions or set concepts, uh, set designs even. So that's it for me. I want to say thanks for coming by and watching. I'll be doing an AEC thing at 5.30 if anyone's interesting as well. Thank you.